I'm Enzo Carter, and today we're going to be doing a radiation safety video. Today we are joined by my assistant, Leo Carter. Hey guys, I'm Leo Carter. In order to um, talk about radiation safety, we sh first have to figure out what radiation is anyway. Radiation is just anything giving off energy. Like, um, uh, everything b above absolute zero gives off energy in the infrared. Like black body radiation, for example. Other forms of radiation include microwaves, which heat our food in, little, in um, microwave ovens. Also, there's nuclear radiation, which is what most people talk about, like, which is basically Chernobyl and Fukushima. But also include familiar sources like the sun. Hey, Enzo, is all radiation bad for you? No, of course not. Uh, radiation like microwave radiation is non-ionizing, which means it doesn't have enough energy to knock an electron off an atom. It also, infrared radiation, it, which is what me and you give off, is just heat. The only way infrared radiation can hurt you is if you heat something up too much in like a stove, microwave, or oven. All those, all those things do is they take the um, molecules and they start making them move around a lot, which is all heat actually is. So the only risk with um, um, infrared radiation is a burn. Hot. Now we're going to go down the chain of photonic forms of radiation. There's a few other types of radiation that we're going to look at later, but let's go with the first one, radio waves. Radio waves, there's not too many precautions for them. Just don't go, any, don't go near any giant radio tower or anything. The next one is microwave, microwaves, which the microwave oven, the, the leading cause of death for microwave ovens is electrocution. So you don't have to worry too much about those. Next one, we have infrared. Infrared radiation, the worst thing, as we saw earlier, is a burn. Visible light is, well, the worst thing about it is it can damage your retina. That's pretty much it. And notice the wavelengths are slowly getting smaller. Which, and the smaller the wavelength, the higher the energy. Ultraviolet radiation, our first form of um, ionizing, is a real pest to beachgoers, which it, it is the reason we wear sunscreen. Because what it does is it changes or kills the state of our... Uh, of the first layer of defense of our body, which is our skin. It changes it by knocking the electron off the atom, which is what ionizing means. Next up, we have x-rays. The, the least amount of x-rays you should get on um, a yearly basis is from a dental x-ray. The most is from a CAT scan. And now onto the hardest hitter of all the photonic radiation. Gamma rays. Gamma rays are ex ex exceptionally hard to block. Where X-rays, they're the basically the lesser version of gamma rays. Gamma rays, you might need like some thick lead or a big piece of concrete to block. X-rays, maybe a thin piece of lead. And now we're going to move on to what most people consider when they think about radiation. Now, now for the radiation we didn't discuss. First up, alpha particles. Alpha particles, all it is is a helium nucleus. A nucleus is just the atom without the electron. And it is not so dangerous outside the body because even a sheet of paper can stop it. Also the outer layer of your skin. But inside the body, oh, it's pretty bad. Next up, beta. Beta is either an electron or a positron. A positron is just the antimatter version of an electron. And I think it can go through paper, but thin sheets of aluminum or wood can stop it. Next up, we have gamma, which we talked a little bit about earlier. But gamma rays, they're just a very high energy photon, which is that squiggly line there. Gammas are pretty hard to stop. You need maybe a thick sheet of lead or a large piece of concrete. Last, but certainly not least, neutrons. Very high energy, no charge, very hard to stop. Some of the things that can stop it are things with very high hydrogen content, such as water, paraffin wax, and HDPE. 
The reason neutrons are so dangerous is because they can change the nucleus of an atom. Now that we know what radiation is, let's figure out how to safely handle it. Yeah. The first steps in protecting yourself from radioactive materials is eye protection and something to protect your skin, like gloves. The reason we're going to wear gloves or any or anything to protect your skin is because um, the stuff we're going to deal with, which, like the uranium rock, is very dusty. And the dust, if it gets on your hands and you forget to wash them, can get on the next thing you touch. Like, let's say you rub your eye or scratch your nose or or you're eating something. And if it, and if it gets in your food, which you eat, it's just really bad because alpha particles are really bad inside the body and safe out, outside the body since your skin can block it. You still want it on your skin. Uh, Enzo? Here we have an actual piece of uranium ore, which is also known as uranite, and it is mainly composed of uranium-238, which is definitely radioactive because Definitely radioactive, and they used to make you, they used to make um, household items out of this because when you do when you do because it can make a very beautiful red color, like this like this um, uranium dioxide pewter plate, which I have a full size one around here somewhere. Leo, where's the radioactive pewter plate? What radioactive plate? That one. Oh. Um. Uh, uh. Oh my god, I think I watched my mouth all good. Now we're going to look at alpha particle shielding. Uranium, the uranite rock, is not a uh, truly alpha, has a few gammas in there from the other uranium isotopes. U238, the main source from this, is all alpha. So we're going to first take some paper. Since this is a very, very hot rock, it, the, it's going to go through the paper. Definitely going through the paper. Next, we're going to use tin foil. Goes through that as well. Now we have a, um, a sheet of lead. It should go. It sh I don't think it should go through the lead because, well, it it should the lead should probably block all of them. But there's a few gamma rays in there that might go through the lead. So let's see. A lot lower, not taking as much. So the lead blocks it. That's what we got from all this. The best form of radiation safety is the inverse square law. If you don't know what that is, is it is the farther away you move from something like this, the safer you are. Watch. See when we're going right up to it, since alphas are alphas are trying to grab electrons out of whatever they can. See when we move it up, the alpha particles are actually grabbing electrons off the off the um, oxygen and nitrogen in the air. But since there's so many, look, it's almost cut out up here. As we move back down, there's less distance between it. Distance is the best way to be radiation safe. This here is a Static Master Polonium-210 Static Electricity Remover. Well, Polonium-210 is the single most poisonous thing on planet Earth, but luckily it's, in, it's increased in gold and basically you can't really ingest it when it's in the gold or whatever unless you like melt it down but the reason the, the reason it's a static master is because it removes static electricity because it fires because it's, it's an alpha emitter and it fires alpha particles at the atom with the sta extra electrons which is all static electricity is and the alpha particles will pick up two of the electrons and leave and just float away as a helium as a helium atom and this stuff has a half-life of a, about 120 days or so. And the difference between it and uranium 
is the fact that the shorter the half life, the more energy, the more alpha particles it gives off because it just because it has to exhaust a bunch more energy in a shorter time. Like uranium's half life or uranium two thirty eight, which that rock was mainly composed of, has a half life of about five billion years, a very long time. This thing is around a hundred. It has a half life of around a hundred days. So. Very hot. Crazy hot. And we got this a few years ago, so it's half like the whole lot. So now we're going to do the same test we did with the uranium. Take the paper, put it here. And this is all alpha particles, so. Can't get through the paper, because paper stops alpha, stops alpha particles. Our uranium gave off a few uh, gamma rays, which went through the paper. Now for tin foil. Doesn't go through. Now for lead, which it's probably it's not gonna go it doesn't go through paper. Doesn't go through. So a sheet of paper will stop a, a main alpha particle in the inner, even if it's like that. And now we're going to use the inverse square law. We're going to go down here and Don't even have to move it that far away since there's only alpha particles coming off this. And the uranium we used earlier had a few gammas mixed in mixed in with it. <clears throat> Here is tritium. Tritium is a, has a low energy beta emission and is used in exit signs. has a half life of 12 years, more than the polonium. Now since it's lower energy beta, it, it's probably going to go through the paper. Yep. And now we got the tin foil. Goes through that. Now we're gonna do lead. Gotta put some gloves on. Does not go through lead. So tritium will so low energy beta particles will go through tin, uh, aluminum foil and paper, but not lead. <coughs> now for the inverse square law. Like all radiation, distance is what really protects you. Next we're going to do radium. Radium was used a lot in the 20s and 30s to paint, to put on um, a clock hands and, uh, uh, and the dials of um, instruments on airplanes and other machines. It gives off a mix of beta, gamma, and alpha. Aluminum foil. Aluminum foil. Goes through that, so it's definitely going through the paper.
It even goes through lead slightly. And now we're going. Now we're testing the inverse square law. And as always, distance protects you the most. Last but not least, neutrons. Neutrons, very hard to detect, no charge, high energy, can change the nucleus of an atom, very dangerous. The reason they're so hard to detect is because they have no charge. So they have no way, basically it's like you have something magnetic going, going right by something metal, it would, you know, you'd feel a pull towards it. That's why protons um, stop, because they do that with the atom. But neutrons, since they have no charge, they just go right past. The only way to um, uh, stop them is with something high in hydrogen, like water, paraffin wax, and HDPE. The way you can detect a, ne uh, a neutron is with a neutron detector. Here's the actual detector, and let's just say my hand is the HDPE that slows the neutron. So here's our neutron, it hits the HDPE, and when it hits that, it's slowing down. And then when it hits the detector, this is a helium-3 tube. The helium-3 uh, the reason uh, the helium-3 tube detects it is because helium-3 wants to be helium-4. Helium-3 has two protons and a neutron. It wants to be helium-4, which has two neutrons and two protons. So then the, the neutron connects with the helium-3, making the helium-4, and that's how it detects it. And over here, we have our nuclear fusion reactor which is how we produce neutrons here in the lab. And here's how our nuclear fusion reactor, well, does nuclear fusion. So we have our cathode, which is, has a, a bunch of electrons on it because we're, um, we're putting a bunch of high voltage into it, which also creates a plasma around it, which is just a soup of um, electrons, pretty much, and atoms that, have, that don't have their electrons. So, but the, in those atoms, they, don't, they need their electrons. But our cathode, since it has all the electricity in it, has a bunch of electrons on it. So all the deuterium atoms are going straight for it. And then you know what happens when two things are going to the exact same place? They hit each other. For about a split second, they become uh, helium-4. And then they'll either become helium-3 or, or um, tritium. What he the helium-3 is when a neutron comes off, and that's what we want. And then the neutron will fly off our reactor and hopefully run into our neutron detector so we can detect it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to Enzo's channel and have a nice day. like 10 minutes only I'm doing that. Just like the last. <laughs> no, the, no, the, no, the new outro. No, it's not gonna be it. The new outro. Did that look weird? <laughs> it's not focused on it. Wait, is that recording? Is that still recording? Last but not least, neutrons. Neutrons. Very, no low, no energy, uh, no charge. And they start moving them around, which is what heat is. Hot. Hot. And atoms. Hot. What all heat is. Hot. I was late again. I just wasn't ready.